we're going to show you how to hook up an infrared sensor to a Raspberry Pi and get it working with a little Python program. Okay, so we've got three little uh, connectors here. Uh, ground, well, that's easy. That's the black ground one. So we're going to put that to ground. I think VCC must be the like a five volt source or a three volt source. I suppose I'd have to look it up. We'll see. And out must be for our signal. So that's the switch going on and off. So basically the two on the right are like a battery plus or minus, And this is the information on the left there out. Let's figure that out. All right, we're going to attach this IOR thing to uh, a Raspberry Pi. And we've got a breadboard here, but I suppose you could just use like jump leads straight from the pins if you wanted. I'm going to take a red wire and put it on this little five volts. And then I'm going to put, um, let's go for a green wire. I don't have any black uh, on this ground. And then we're going to pick a switch. So a GPIO that not, I'm not using is GPIO 25. Um, I plugged in all my other motors and that kind of stuff just to make this video clear. Um, but normally, like, I could just plug it in. You don't have to plug it in everything. <laughs> okay, uh, so there are my wires. And now I just hook these up to uh, where I've got them in on the breadboard. Okay. So I'm just going to put my signal on that first one there. I put my ground in the middle. And my positive goes on the VCC. The red light on the right is the power, and the green light on the left means it sees something. Now there's nothing there, which means uh, the sensitivity is not right. So I'm just going to use the screwdriver here. I'm going to turn it anti-clockwise so that just goes off, and then test it by putting my hand over it. So what should happen is the um, light should come up, bounce off an object, and come back down and be detected by the other light. So I'm going to put my hand here. There it is. It's working just fine there. So you can adjust the distance sensitivity using that later on. Let's start by importing import a or I hate this bit or because this guy, look at that, capital letter snaky as GPIO. We're also gonna need um I always like to add in from time import sleep so I can use pauses in the program if I need to. We're gonna go GPO dot set mode set ode set mode and we're gonna go GPO dot BCM because we're actually very excited. And if you know what the other option is you'll find that hilarious. So we're gonna use GPO we're gonna set it up uh, let's go for 17 and we're going to set that up as an output. So you go GPO dot, no wait, not input. output, input. Yeah, input. In, ooh, look at the menu. Ha, huh, unexpected. In. Right, there you go. Now it's fine. So we're going to take an input. So just like you go GPO dot output, um, you know, for the, the motors and then kind of go uh, 17. We're actually going to go for an input this time, so I'm going to change this bit to input. Yeah, GPO dot input seventeen. That's the signal coming in. Now I don't want to keep having to type this all the time, so I'm going to make a a shortcut for that. I'm just going to call that the sensor. I could call it like I equals this or whatever, but just so you know, it's a sensor. Um, deadly. And then I want to go if the sensor is on, do this. If the sensor is off, do that. So I go if sensor sensor is equal to one, then uh, let's print. I don't know. I don't know. Like I see it. I see one, 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 one. Actually, not sure if one is detecting something or one is not detecting something. And to be honest, I don't know until I actually do it. So. You know, the best thing about programming is you can just go and check it. Um, so just in case it goes it too fast, um, I'm just going to put in a very, very short sleep in here. Okay, 0 0.1. I don't want it like drilling down a million lines a second. So this will kind of slow down the code a little bit. Else if 
that same sensor is equal to zero, which means off, one being on, zero being off. I think I did this before, and it's actually backwards, the way the sensor works. So, like I said, I'm not going to say print this is off, because I actually don't remember. So I'm just going to go, uh, this was zero in my code. So then when it when it does something, I'll, I'll know, you know, I'll, I'll, when I put my hand over it, I'll know which is which. Okay, grant. There's one fatal flaw with this right now. This will run through the program once, and that will be the end of that. The program will be over, all the fun will be gone. So now I could put in, like, while true here, okay? And, you know, put this in a... In the, in the while loop, and then it'll it'll do this, and you like it'll keep checking. But I actually did this before, and I made this mistake. I forgot. This is where it actually reads the information. So it'll read it once, and then it'll just check. It'll go the answer was this or that or this or this, and they'll just keep telling you the same answer. So you'll you'll never check. You've got to make it read every time. So that's got to go into the loop. Okay, that's also got to go in there. Now. That these are the children of this parent here. It's gonna go sensor read whatever the sensor is. If it's one, it'll do this. If it's zero, it'll do that. Then read what the sensor is. It's one, and keep doing that. So you'll probably get a string. Let's just, let's let's give it a go. We're gonna save it. Do you know what I never did? I never put in. I never put in any comments. Very bold. If you don't comment. Other people won't know what you're saying or what you're trying to do. Absolutely. So this reads from the sensor. So I'm going to say this does. Uh, I actually don't know what this does yet. I mean, like, one. Is that putting my hand on or is that not putting my hand on it? I guess I'm, I'm just going to leave this and this one here. I'll put in a, a placeholder comment. But to be honest, I'm not sure what that does yet. Yeah. So. Uh, let's just run the program and then see what, put our hand over, if we get, um, we'll figure out what 1 and 0 is then. So run the program, got to run it, you got to save it to run it. Here it goes. Three. I see, I see, I see, I see, put your hand over. Oh, 0 is hand on, 1 is hand off. So hand on, hand off, hand on is 0. Hand off is one. So then I hit Control C to kill that. And uh, now um, I already forget which is which. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing I remember. This is why you. This is why you call your partner. Um, it is what you thought uh, the first time. One is equal to no value. Nothing is oh, detected. Oh, okay. So great, true is false and false is true. Classic yeah. programming. Thanks, coding. Let me tell them. Okay, I see na na as they say in, in Monagar. I didn't know na. That's a terrible accent. Oh look, it's a something. It's a hat <laughs> Cool. Um. So now I know what this does. Uh, this means there is no signal. This means there is a signal. Okay, Daddy, well that's probably enough for the first video. I we'll now like integrate this into a working rovery thing to control some motors and do stuff with it. Should be cool. Okay, well before you go on, I just want to say how important it is to comment your stuff. Yeah, comment or Tony will be sad. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, when I was learning programming, if I didn't comment something, my examiner would just put a line through it. He said he wouldn't read it because there's no explanation of it. Because I might know what it does, or I might not. I might have just found it on the internet. Yeah, it actually does. It shows that he didn't just rip it off the internet somewhere as well. Uh, or, or, or if you did, at least you understand it if you can put a good comment in. <laughs> yeah. like, it's so... But it makes it easy for yourself, especially yeah. when you write big programs. Cool. All right. Next video.